Hey there, it's Potmos and nice of you to join me for a brand new video where I will be showing you all the new things that came with update 1.9.6 and there's a few nice changes that they're making to the game. Let's go over them. The first change is done to the housing and we can already see there are these little icons hovering over the houses with a red arrow pointing downwards which means that these houses might degrade over time. These are the upgraded houses and if we click a house right now we can easily see that right here you can see all the requirements that a certain house needs. Now one of the basic requirements is that it needs to be into a residential area, one of those painted zones. If it's out of a residential area, you will see that it will go away and it's no longer in the right area. Um, but for it to upgrade, you can see that it needs to be in a desirable neighborhood. It needs to have beautifications around and there needs to be a commoner a resident present. If not, a house will start to degrade and will revert back to the old thing. Now it's pretty easy because all you have to do in this case is just get a beautification going and uh, that will could already be enough to make sure that a certain house will not degrade. So we can see that this beautification is not big enough. It doesn't suit the house at this point. So we'll have to find the right one, of course. But once we do, or we build multiple, because if we do multiple of these, you will see that the zone that it works in will actually extend. And now once we build this, you will see that... The icon got removed. This is now a house with a beautified area and all the upgrade essentials are met. So this house will stay upgraded. Another house where the things are not met. This one, for instance, is empty and there's no beautifications around. As soon as this timer goes down, it will disappear. It will revert back to the old house and you will lose a house that way. So this makes it easier to see what a house needs and you can easily make houses available for upgrading so if you don't want a certain area to have these upgraded houses don't build beautifications in them in the areas where you do build them you will see the upgraded houses so for instance if we want to make this like a nice city center we should build a lot of beautifications here all these houses will then be ready for upgrades so we can see all the nice stone houses appearing here if we don't build any beautifications here these houses won't simply not upgrade so um or will simply not upgrade. So that's a way that you have a little bit more control over your city as well. The next thing to take a look at, we already did for a bit, are the beautifications and how they work. So we have a lot of beautifications available to us. I unlocked, unlocked several and now you can see the area in which it will work. So if we place this little fountain here, you can see that even though it's close to the houses right now, only two houses will benefit. But the good thing is once we place it and it's built, and we add more beautifications to it. Let's say we're going to add a few trees to it. You will see the area expanding the closer it gets to it. And if you place it very close, you can see that all of a sudden the um, beautification area that this works in is big time expanded. And if we place a tree and we go to continue, you can see that the whole area is now more and more beautified. The further away you get, the smaller the circle gets, but the further you put it in, the bigger it gets and this is a pretty easy way that you can now see where the actual beautifications take effect and how they influence each other and i think it's a very cool feature that like this right now we have a very much beautified area um, and this will help you place the beautifications to let you see uh, which houses uh, are actually affected by it and of course it gives you an incentive to actually use beautifications right now there was no real need to do that you did not have to build a beautiful town but um, now that houses need the beautification to be upgraded it's very nice that you actually have to build them and see the effects of it so i think this is a great add-on Next change, villager needs. If we click a villager, we can easily see that it has essential needs now and some additional needs. The essential needs are the ones that you really have to provide. And if you don't provide them in time, a villager will leave. But for now, villagers only had their needs and you had to fulfill them all. And if you didn't do that, they would leave anyway. Right now we have the additional needs. And upon fulfilling this, 
you will have to make sure that a villager can keep access to a thing like services. But once you have not fulfilled this in the first place, it will just remain open and there's no need to get it in the, in the beginning because villagers will not ask for it. As soon as you start to provide it for the first time, then you will have to keep providing it and if you lose it, villagers might still leave. But this can make it a little bit easier in the beginning where you don't have to just rush your church and make sure that everybody has it or your villagers will leave. They will only start requiring this as soon as you give it to them the first time. These of course remain vital so make sure you get always the essential needs to your villagers so that you can see what they need. So if we upgrade this villagers you can now see we need to provide it with entertainment and goods. We have not provided these to the villagers so far so it is not a requirement yet. As soon as it buys the first goods, say common clothing, from that point on we really need to provide this to the villager otherwise they will start to leave. So um, this makes it a little bit easier to control things. You can already get commoners without having entertainment present and as soon as you have it present then yeah you have to make sure you keep it present but there's no real rush to get a tavern early on even if you start promoting villagers already. So that's a nice big change. For the next little change we'll take a look at our monastery and this goes for all the modular buildings that we can create in the game. They made a navigational change so right now we can see an overview of the whole area here. Um, but if you click the sub buildings now we can see all the different sub buildings for instance the nun dorps we can click it now we can see six out of ten are in there we can also immediately expand just this building so you can make it larger or, or make changes to it we can also now go back to the monument and to the full monument view and then click the monastic garden see how that's going on so they net the navigation through your sub buildings of these big monuments is now improved so it's easier to navigate them and see what they do and how they work. Another change they made goes to the resource tab which is right here. Here we can see the resources. Now we see that we had four different buttons here for trade setup. They've simplified that. You can either now buy goods or sell goods. If you don't click any of those it will be set to no trade at all. If we click this right now we can see that we can start buying it, we can start selling it or whatever. But that's basically how it works right now. It's just buying or selling. You can still set the numbers. So they make this a little bit easier which is a nice addition. There's less buttons to push and you can just see how that goes. They also made a little change in the progression tab. And especially to those that are now not unlocked if we can see right here. You can see right here it requires 150 splendor to start unlocking these. Now it also says that if you hover over them you can see it's locked and it requires 150 progression. Normally it didn't say that. It's just a little add-on but it gives clearer information about what you need for it. So that's a little nice addition as well. The last big change that I'm going to show you is one that's a little bit under the hood because right now we can't see it but that's where the overlays come in and if we take the overlay for undesirable neighborhood we can see these big brown patches around the fisheries and around our sheep farms around the lumber camps and stuff like that. This is noise pollution and this of course has a negative impact on housing and things. So far you could build houses very close to fisheries. There was no noise whatsoever coming from it so no bad negative effects. Now there is especially true for uh, things like sheep and other food gatherers and things like that. They have a negative impact now. Which makes it a bit harder to plan your city because you have to take this into account of course. It's not that bad and it's obvious that some error things actually create pollution so I think noise pollution so I think it's a great add-on but just make sure you take this into account when placing buildings normally I would have a lot of fisheries and then houses very close to it now you don't do that you just make sure the houses are a bit further away because they'll be negatively impacted by the stuff that is around luckily right here we don't have any houses close by the um, noisy area so they won't be affected but I can assure you if they are in this, those zones they will not like it that much. So um, the desirable uh, neighborhood will go down and that's not good. So make sure you track all the buildings that produce noise pollution. Use this layover so you can see where it's all happening. And you can make it the most beautiful and nice town for people to live in. Next to these bigger updates I've shown you, they've done a lot of tweaking in the game. So there's a lot of buildings and things that are now have a slightly different cost to it. Either in gold coins or in materials that you need to use. 
Uh, they added a uh, beautification point to monuments, for instance. So now if you place a big monument, um, they will also grant a beautification bonus. And there are a lot of these minor tweaks that you will find out during the game as you play this lovely game. I hope this video helps you to get a good overview of what's new and what they changed. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment on whether you want to see more videos like this. Have fun playing the game. See you next time. Bye bye.